Ms. Hillier, Sir Lindsay Hoyle. Yay. Mr. Clark, thank you. And I will say, as everybody else, you will be missed in this house. But I do know one thing. I don't think it will be the end of your voice. I think your voice will continue to give us advice for a lot longer in time. <laughs> but of course, a great hero of mine is here today. That is Baroness Boothroyd. She was the White Rose. She was the voice of the North. What the White Rose brought, hopefully the Red Rose will follow. <laughs> But of course, <laughs> it is an absolute privilege to speak again from these back benches. These are the back benches that matter. These are the back benches that hold the executive to account. And there has been no better time than the 13 years I spent here, sometimes with the Labour government, and shortly afterwards we saw a different government. But it is about making sure whoever's in power that these benches have the right to question and hold to account. That's what matters. And of course, it's about having an accountable speaker to back that up. It isn't just about the back benches, it's about a speaker that endorses and supports the back benches. And that's what I hope I've always shown. During my year, nine years as deputy, I've tried to ensure there is not one part of this House that's not been brought to speak, or whatever size of party I've encouraged to make sure their voice is heard. And I want to continue to do that, because it's not a club that says that you've been here for 35 years. Don't take it wrong, Mr Clark. <laughs> the fact is that when I look at 35 years of people in this House, I think I've heard that speech once a or once more and once again and many more times. That speech is important, but the person who walked through that door yesterday is just as important to their constituents. Their voice must be heard as well, and the pecking order ought not to be there. It is about equality. We are all equal in this House when we come to speak, and that's the point that we must retain. And I promise you, that is what I will do. Of course, a speaker has to be trusted, and hopefully I've built up that trust. It's about having a proven track record, and I hope you would agree that I've got that track record. And when people say, well, I'll do this in such amount of time on Prime Minister's questions, or I will do something else, I have done it. I have been there. And yes, we did reduce the time, because it's not about me. It's about these benches. And that's why you can do it in good time. And that's what I want to continue to do. So when I say I have done it, I've done Prime Minister's questions, I do the budget, I've done many things in this House. But it's all with fairness. And of course, that's what matters to us all. And of course, we have touched on reform. We need to continue reform. We need to support people in security. Because I've got to tell you, when I took over security, there were no measures for MPs. There was so little for us, we didn't matter. I hope that people will recognise what I have done and stood up and made sure that we can feel safe. That job has started but has not finished. I want you to give me that chance to finish it as Speaker of this House. I promise you I will continue to fight to make sure we are safe, our families are safe, our staff are safe and the House as well is safe. And that's what matters. It's about delivering for all. And I assure you, that's what I will do. It's about experience and drive that I will make sure, as I say, to continue reform for the best of all. This chamber, I believe, is underused. And we ought to seriously look how much more we can get out of this chamber. I think there's great ideas we can come forward to. And as I say, my pledge to you that this House I will be here for them and for you, and to make sure you have a deputy speaker that can become speaker that will not let you down. I will be accountable. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Sir Lindsay.